I got the answer. It's Cocoa Puffs, Bob. I have no idea why, but it fits the equation. Check it out. Half Glass Gaming. Yeah, we're back. Hey, I'm Julian. That's just Josh. I'm just Josh. That's Mandy. Hi. There's the Rev. That is who I am. Yeah, so we're back. Life's been progressing, huh? Life was pretty good this morning. Uh, Julian brought over a surprise gift for all of us. Snapple, my drink of choice. I was legitimately surprised at how much like an actual apple, Snapple apple tastes. I was expecting that normal kind of sweet artificial apple taste, but no, it's it tastes like you're drinking an apple. Mm-hmm. It's that's, legit. That's impressive. See, that's how that's how I felt when when I was in Duluth. And it was it sipping down my first Snapple. It was like, oh man, is this what Snapple tastes like? This is great. And now here, here we are. Apparently, it is made from the greatest stuff on earth. Apples. It's yeah. got pear juice in it. That's deceptive. Snapple per apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> per apple, the Snapple. <laughs> I mean, I'd say it. Yeah. I drink it even. <laughs> It's gluten-free. There you go. Gluten and fruit beverages is a real problem. <laughs> I know every time I buy a drink, it's got wheat or wheat byproducts in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Josh, how was going to the doctor? I was feeling sick this past week, and it was getting worse and worse, and um, having a lot of stomach problems. I ended up going to the doctor, and first of all, I love this doctor. I think he was great, but he's not allowed to be my doctor uh, of choice because he's he's like a roaming doctor. He goes Hmm. from from clinic to clinic. Hmm. But he reminded me of John Hammond from Jurassic Park, kind of like a white bearded, kind of giggly guy. Uh-huh. What a cool doctor. And I just liked him a lot. But he kind of sat me down and he's like, okay, what do you think the problem is? And I was like, well, I'm going to be honest, I gained about 50 pounds in the past two years. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> the, the problems you're having are almost certainly because of this rapid weight gain. And so we talked about like a weight loss plan and all this stuff and mm-hmm. i'm trying to eat healthier and be more active and mm-hmm. yada 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 and that's that's not fun for me because i like to play video games and i like to eat mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. and so i've been cooking good stuff for you so yeah mandy's been very good we had a nice salad and pasta mm-hmm. and stuff last night and it was very good you should uh get on this on the, a vegetarian diet i mean not because i think meat is inherently bad and fatty but because if you're eating vegetarian by and large you're going to be eating a lot more healthy stuff just because that's that's what you got. See, that's not true. Like, I I didn't eat red meat for six years, and I was gaining weight the entire you, time. You can <laughs> eat a vegetarian diet that is full of junk food. I mean, potatoes you just are a thing. You absolutely can, and I will find a way. I, I'm just saying that might be a way to help you, especially given that your girlfriend <laughs> is a vegetarian, so it would be much easier for you to stick with it. I don't cook meat for Josh very often, because I only do it when he asks. And he sure asks, not. and he asks like if I make him sandwiches, and he asked on Thanksgiving. Yeah, so I mean, I don't. Lucky. I really, and that's the thing is, like, I don't have this like desire to eat a lot of meat. Like, I just don't, and especially red meat. And it's like, it's like if I wanted to cut red meat out of my diet again completely, I, I probably wouldn't even notice. Mm-hmm. You should uh, get a membership with Blue Apron. What's it's that? a uh, service that sort of sends you weekly recipes and uh, fresh and ingredients uh, just delivers it to your house and it kind of is a way to make sure that you are eating healthy and properly are you on blue apron no (laughs) i'm one of those vegetarians that eats nothing but junk blue Blue apron (laughs) it's their new sponsor yeah i don't know i i I don't like following recipes when i cook Mm -hmm. i use the recipes as a template i don't make anything i know josh was when josh was really sick he asked me to make him tomato soup and grilled cheese like just canned tomato soup and then he made it without me the next day and he's like it doesn't taste the same as when you made it and it's mm-hmm. like because i because i don't i can't even make a tomato soup out of a can following the instructions i have 
to I have to mess with it because that's how oh yeah I, like I think that's cook. a good way to start you know you get your soup you add your peppers you add your salt you add, yeah you know whatever but uh, you know when I make spaghetti sauce I take it out of the jar then I add my own fresh veggies to it and uh, my own meat crumbles and everything you know well they're the called fake. veggie crumbles now they used to be called meat crumbles but fake meat crumbles they they make them out of a bunch of different stuff mm-hmm. it's good like soy and mm-hmm. soy and soy primarily. you wouldn't I was when I was gonna put I was gonna put crumbles in taco pie but you wouldn't let me so I put beans in instead extra beans don't be afraid of it dude they're good don't be afraid there's, of there's it there's all sorts of there's like that one though that's like a letter and a number and I'm always nervous about that one is it like V84 yeah something like that I'm thinking of TVP is what I'm thinking oh of. TVP yeah 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 that stuff is insane is Lots the number things. the V for five <laughs> it, it, it's just how about just I'm, I'm, you're wrong <laughs> Well, there's Beyond Beef, which I wasn't a big fan of. Gardein, um, that's another one that's not that great. Corn. Corn, which is some sort of a, I don't know what it is. But it does not contain corn, oddly enough. No, no it's spelled know. with a Q, spelled Q-U-R-N. But I've just been pinning, like, healthy recipes on Pinterest and then getting all excited about it. I'm like, Josh, I've pinned all these healthy recipes for you on Pinterest. No, Pinterest is mean to me, though. Man, that, it's just brutal. Hmm. It just finds these ways to get these little digs in. And I've been sick, too. So, like, that's all I've been doing is lying around and watching French TV mm-hmm. and playing on Pinterest. And like every every ten pins or so, it gets a dig in. It's like, hey, we thought you would like this board. I dress like a five year old. Hey, I thought you would like this board. I'm a Mormon and I love fashion. And like, <laughs> and that's the thing is, it's like it's almost endearing because Pinterest isn't actually mean. It's just an algorithm that thinks there are Mormon and five year old qualities. <laughs> to my fashion choices and maybe they're not wrong and i mean how could i argue with pinterest's incredible algorithm but then i look at the boards and they're actually really good (laughs) (laughs) so um, the most fashionable woman five-year-old around and i cook good food yeah thanks pinterest I have no interest in Pinterest. I mean, Pinterest is really <laughs> inspirational phrases, clothing, and food. Mm-hmm. So if you don't care about yeah. at least two of those three things, mm-hmm. you probably won't get that into Pinterest. No. I follow some writers on Twitter, and all of their Twitter feed is just inspirational quotes about God. writing. I hate it. inspirational quotes I about kinda anything. I kind of want to. I hate inspiration. Me too, man. You know what I, mean? just... I, I, I just as soon as I even see a font that looks like it might be used for inspirational quotes. <laughs> I'm yeah. like fist out, man. Yeah. I, I don't want to be inspired. I see a right child now. holding a daisy. You know what I mean. <laughs> I see like a guy in a suit on a bench, and I'm just a, like, a really <laughs> persistent kitten who isn't yeah. giving up. Oh no! <laughs> screw your determination, yeah. kitten. Like yeah. fall to the ground. You'll land on four feet. Yeah. How am I supposed to be You'll concerned be about your play? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Half glass gaming. <laughs> Fuck you, kitten. <laughs> I didn't realize Mandy had such an anti-kitten stance. I love kittens, man. I just hate inspiration. Gee, yeah. as long as the kittens aren't determined, they're great. I just don't. I don't want them to be inspiring because really, it's it's the whole hang in there thing is false. It's yeah. built in a false pretense that the cat is in danger if it falls. I mean, if the cat finishes climbing, it'll probably knock something over and make everybody mad. Mm-hmm. Well, and we all know it's just climbing that tree to kill those birds. So. I know. So I, I just don't want to encourage the kitten i want the kitten to fall not hurt itself because it won't Mm -hmm. and grow up to be a nice chill cat Mm -hmm. that's what i want for that kitten that doesn't kill birds or knock over jars of jelly beans those hang in there posters really make me mad because kittens climbing things never ends well (laughs) unless the cat falls yeah that's true this is... I really do hate inspirational quotes and inspirational posters. I uh, my favorite motivational demotivational thing is uh, a s- statement of you're just like snowflakes. Everyone is unique, and when you have a bunch, you have a bunch of snow. That's actually kind of inspirational to me because it's true. You know, every snowflake is unique, but when you have a bunch of them, you just have snow. Every human is unique. When you have a bunch of them, you've got this bullshit that we call life. But that doesn't mean it can't be pretty. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after a few months, it just ends up dirty and and messy on the side of the road and everybody is tired of it. Mm-hmm. Just like humanity. Yeah. Because the status is not quo. Wow. Man, I'm looking at your shirt, Josh, and I'm torn. 
is Thor and Captain America and Wolverine uh, African American? They're they're colored rather dark. On, yeah, on that's, this shirt. that's motivational. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. That's what that you shirt can, tells me. You, you, Julian Watkins, yeah. who is African American yep. at least in part, mm-hmm. uh, could be Wolverine, Captain America, or Thor. Mm-hmm. But or not, all three at once. Or yeah. all three at once. But not the Incredible Hulk, who no. uh, is green. Yeah. Are, are you uncomfortable with everybody staring at you and examining you? Star- staring at the part that the doctor told me needs to be smaller. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> I'm just hoping you take off your shirt, really, personally. And I think on that highly inspirational note, I'm going to call for a break. Pull you away from the ledge. Uh, whisper softly into your ears. It's going to be all right. I'd like to thank, of course, uh, Wheelie, 2XAA, for the music that they contribute to this podcast. Obviously, uh, we're on a number of different uh, venues. You can find us on RetroVolve.com. You can read some articles. Uh, you can also find us on HalfGlassGaming.com. Uh, I'd like to also say, you know, check us out on uh, iTunes. You can uh, subscribe to us. Make sure that this podcast shows up every mo- Wednesday morning, fresh in your mailbox. You can also rate us there. Um, hi- highly enough, if you rate us highly enough, I guarantee you magical things will happen. Some of them, you know, may Based invo- on algorithms. So if you haven't gathered, uh, this is going to be a loose and fast episode. Uh, we're just going to be chilling, you know, chillaxing. We'll be back from the break. So we're going to spend today just kind of having a little bit of an informal jaw session. It's spring. I think we're all a little spring feverish. Yeah. I didn't feel like putting on pants today, uh, and that makes it a non-work day. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of, you know, just talk about some games that we've, we've been playing, we are playing, we've never played, that we might play. So let's play. Games that we might play but never never get around to. That's that's my half my Steam library. <laughs> I, I've got like Hitman Absolution because I got it for, I think I, that was a gift from someone. Mm-hmm. I, I installed it, haven't played it. Uh, I, I got Amnesia, The Dark Descent, played it for, it, that's, it was a fun game, played it for like an hour, haven't gone back to it in two months. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so many games that I, I have like that. Mm-hmm. My PlayStation Network library is worse than my Steam library at this point. It's just... Well, but you don't really have a computer that runs games very well, right? I can run some games. I mean, I've been, I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley. I put up some guides on Retrovolve because... It's a it's an interesting little game that uh, I think doesn't necessarily explain all of its rules and how to do things uh, to the player, but mm-hmm. I think that's kind of I kind of like when games let you figure out things on your own. Yeah, and it, you know you can spend ten hours in the game and then read a little piece on the game and be like, oh wait, I never knew I could do that, mm-hmm. and then you want to like go back and play some more so you can do that thing you didn't know you could do. Like I really like games like that, and mm-hmm. that's why Minecraft was so appealing to me in the beginning. Was in order to understand how to play Minecraft, you really had to figure it out and kind of interact with the community a little bit. I just started playing Minecraft. Like, what do I even do? And that, that makes always makes me think of a uh, cracked video where an elite is teaching a noob. So what are we doing? We're digging. So where are the monsters? There's no monsters, but we're, we're digging. We're getting blocks of dirt. By the way, pile up the dirt. Why? Because there are totally monsters and we need to hide from them. <laughs> I think I, I got back in the Dying Light recently, and uh, I've noticed that um, some of the features of the game leveling up and things of that nature, they've begun to sort of replay the um, initial tutorial information box um, that explains you know, how the mechanics work or whatever, um, which I think is kind of nice. Like, I've had a long enough break. Maybe it's gauging that and sort of saying, hey, remember how to, how to do this, and which is a nice little touch. I kind of wish more games would do that from time to time. I've been trying so hard to get back into Dying Light because I love it. It's great. Like, I really do. But there's so much other stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. I got distracted by Stardew Valley, um, got distracted by some other stuff. Um, The thing about Dying Light to me is, like, whenever I, uh, like, imagine a zombie apocalypse in my head, it has a very specific feel to it. 
And I've never played a video game that really captured the feel of how I think that zombie apocalypse would be like the Mm -hmm. feeling, like the, the feeling, the emotion of it. And, you know, there's a few movies that have done it for me, like uh, 28 Days Later kind of captures it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Dying Light, like, just has that feel. We've had, you know, a billion zombie games, but it's really the first one that resonated with me Mm -hmm. as the zombie apocalypse, as I would imagine it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being so disempowered, but still (laughs) being surrounded by an enemy that's also not very powerful. They're not smart. They're not fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have a, a two by four with some nails in it and you're like well i gotta make do with this and you know you get through and i'm i'm really excited to get to the 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 following stuff because you get to get outside of the city and drive around in little buggies and things and that sounds yeah. so much fun and they keep i keep getting emailed because i'm on their their pr mailing list and so i keep getting emailed about like oh hey we're doing this this cool event in the game and it's like oh that sounds so great they're mm-hmm. doing um like buggy races and things like that i got that. a notification and, of that even though i don't have the, yeah. the dlc I, uh, that makes me think of the second resident evil movie which the resident evil movies watched like a bad fan fiction but one thing i did appreciate uh i was watching the special features on the second movie and they talked about uh all the extras that they had being zombies uh and they made them like go through this training course where they went all right so here's how these zombies are made you know they die first and then the virus makes them keep moving and so here's how a person would be able to move if that happened so now we're going to spend like a week making you practice walking in that way so that you don't do the the regular annoying zombie shuffle stuff but you move like the zombies that we made and like th- that was a neat touch they and, sent him to zombie school yeah right like that that yeah. was kind of neat it was it was too bad like you you guys couldn't sit the writers down and make them do that with the video games so that you know your source material but you did it with the zombies and that was cool <laughs> Yeah, the original Resident Evil, those zombies were like straight up old school zombies. Hands out in front. <laughs> right. Uh, almost like Frankenstein. Really, right. But, uh, the movie Frankenstein wasn't anything like the real Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. The, no. The, the, the fictional Frankenstein. The, the, the fictional, fictional Frankenstein is Victor Frankenstein. <laughs> right. But I mean like Frankenstein's Not, monster. It's just his monster who gets called by <laughs> right. further destroying the proud right. Frankenstein well, name. Right. In the, in the original. The proud Frankenstein name. In the original novel. The monster is not called Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein's monster. Right. And, but <laughs> he's, he's quite intelligent and well spoken. Well, yeah, he's like out there quoting literature and like <laughs> hanging out, and he's like very intelligent. And this might just, you know, be one of those urban legends, but I've heard that the reason Mary Shelley started writing Frankenstein was because she was trying to get out of an orgy that her husband kept trying to start every night with like house guests. Well, see, I, I don't know if that's true because, like, <laughs> that's that's almost certainly not. True. It, it almost certainly isn't, but the, it, it's hilarious. Because there's a lot of information about the environment that, because she, she was part of a writers group, right? She was part right. of a writers group, and they met, and there, I think there was like a storm or something, and they they had all kind of met in this mansion or in this house or cabin or whatever, and they all kind of challenged each other to write something really scary, and she she wrote basically like the seeds of what later. Became Frankenstein. So, Mandy, how, what kind of game? What, what have you been playing? I've been playing nothing. Go ahead. I mean, you have uh, any? Can you justify that? No, I mean, I was playing games. I think there'd been one day all year that I hadn't played games, and then I beat two Fire Emblems back to back and started to play the third one, and then I got sick and I felt burnt out. Mm-hmm. And didn't really want to do anything, so I haven't been playing any games. But I, I still think I may have beaten a game for every week this year. Wow. And a lot of them are very short games, to mm-hmm. be fair. Sure. But, no, I, I had a really good thing going, and now I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, to be honest, though, you know, you play, you beat two Fire Emblems, and then you start a third yeah, one. those are big games. You know, that's a tall those are Those are massive strategy RPG epics, and mm-hmm. they're quite hard. So. Yeah. 
Hopefully you'll, you know, get back into it and in the next five minutes. Yeah, you know the DLC maps that have been released too. Some, uh, some reader or listeners were, you know, asking about, they wanted some more information on some of the older Fire Emblem yeah, I'm, games. Yeah, I love Fire Emblem, so I'm <laughs> happy to recommend Fire Emblem games to people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really like the newer Fire Emblems, and I think they did a really good job of making a very niche series very accessible, but in some ways the older ones are still my favorites but the fire emblem conquest has one of the best maps in the entire fire emblem series it's a defensive map and there are actually very few defensive maps and strategy rpgs in general and those are always my favorites Mm -hmm. i would rather play hold out for a really long time until reinforcements come than kill everything anytime because it's more interesting strategically And so you have this tiny little space with like little turrets you can use. And there's this massive, massive army and like five of your guys. And you have to hold them off for a really long time. But you have resources. You just have to use them really carefully because there's so many of you're so massively outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you try to blitz your way through, you die, Mm -hmm. everybody in a turn. See, I, I hear stories like that, and I hear other people talk about uh, strategy RPGs that they've played, and it sounds so interesting, and like it sounds neat, and like I want to try that. And then whenever I play a strategy RPG, I'm like, like, why can't I just push the B button and and attack? And they're they're hard unless I, uh, jo- I had to help Josh beat a strategy RPG before because this is the genre that I would say I'm the best at. Because I can look at maps and see, and I don't. I'm not good at chess, so I don't know why I'm good at strategy. <laughs> well, you're just you're not good at chess because your brothers were ridiculously good. Yeah, at chess. Uh, I've never told this story in the podcast. My younger brothers are both super good at chess, and like there'd be guys who'd like me who would brag about being really good at chess because that's the kind of guy I attract. <laughs> But uh, they'd be like, oh, I'm so good at chess. I'm like, yeah, you should play my little brother in chess. And like, this guy would come over and get destroyed by a five-year-old in chess <laughs> at the house with the girl he liked. That was yeah. so mean. <laughs> I was proud of my brothers, too, yeah, to be fair. Well, you know, I, I don't know. The way they responded to getting destroyed by a five-year-old at chess might give you some information on I whether mean, or not I, they're I, working. I, I knew none of these guys were going to beat my little brothers at chess. So it was really, well, you think you're good at chess, so what? my little brother is better than you but no my, my brothers are both just crazy good at chess and so and i don't i don't know i don't like chess because it's it's not good map design you know it's <laughs> bare bones map design no a effort. square that's terrible map design you know i Where's can't the terrain? no 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 terrain like in fire emblem man i have to like fight through snow and there could be enemies strategically hiding under the snow and i could put myself in a terrible position if i knock through too much snow in one turn like there's nothing yeah. like that in chess. It's so boring. No, there you know, is not. Bad, like bad that. map design. So it's not my thing. But mm-hmm. I can, I can look at a map and I can see enemy weaknesses and like see the best ways to approach that. And uh, I like, I really like trying to break games. Strategy <laughs> RPGs are great for that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, see, no, I, I Josh was playing Disgaea, and, and I'm like, oh, it's just guys not even hard till the post game, and he's like, no, it's, it's hard. So I'd come in and give him tips. It was fun because usually yeah. he's better at me than every video game, and I'm much better at him, much much better than him at strategy RPGs. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't. There's no way I would have beat Disgaea four without Mandy, but mm-hmm. I, I, she guided me and I got through it. You now I'm some stuck excellent on excellent tips. You did. Now you're gonna have to help me get through Disgaea five because yeah. I'm stuck but, again. <laughs> uh, on my part, like it's I. Don't I don't know. I like I I can't make my brain shift from traditional like turn-based JRPGs to no, this is a strategy RPG. You have to approach it differently. Mm, that's why and I don't like most turn-based RPGs. Like which, unit placement doesn't matter at all. Right. It's garbage. And, and I get that. Like you know, La Pucelle Tactics, uh, a game that I really enjoyed. Uh, you when know, when you made La Pucelle Tactics, it was their first strategy RPG, though not their first game. Okay. But uh, La Pucelle Tactics was not released here until much later, even though it came out quite a while ago because. They're like, a a French RPG? Strategy RPG? Uh, Nuns? We don't want to bring that out. And then they brought out Disgaea, and everybody loved Disgaea. And they're like, oh, what what other games you got? Like, well, there's this game of ours you refuse to release. And they're like, yeah, a new strategy RPG from Nipponichi. But, uh, like, I like it. It's a fun game. But I consistently approach it like 
a turn-based JRPG, uh, and it's it's clearly not one of those. I mean, didn't La Pucelle kind of evolve into Disgaea? Oh, of? yeah, there are similar mechanics, and there are also, especially in DLC, but not always, there are a lot of things from La Pucelle that you'll find in Disgaea. That's my thing with those games, is like, Disgaea is not meant to be approached as if it were a typical RPG. And right. and I have a lot of, you know, typical JRPG experience. And so I want to like, like, oh, I can't beat this fight, so I should grind. And, you know, the temptation is is that because the level cap is 9,999. <laughs> so you're, right. like, yeah. you're like, literally any fight in the game, you can grind and like <laughs> approach 100 <laughs> levels later and then do really well at. Mm-hmm. And so that's my, my strategy over, you know, okay, how should I move my characters or how should I prepare my characters and things like that. And it, that's what Mandy really helps me with when she, like, coaches me at a Disgaea mm-hmm. game. A series that I really enjoy, Valkyrie Profile. Uh, it was really interesting. The, like, the first game was kind of this weird story based but you have to figure out how to access different parts of the story uh game that it's it's really interesting and you can get a remake valkyrie profile linux for the psp having stories pieces of the story just show up and making it very complex to unlock the whole story is really a very japanese thing are are any of you familiar with and i I know the answer to this is no but are any of you familiar with the game machi yeah yeah but machi i hear (laughs) no obviously no you were right (laughs) no the the weird thing about machi is if you, you know how they everybody likes to do best games of all time list in japan machi is consistently in the top five best games of all time. Hmm. It's in, their like, Metal list. Gear Solid 3. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mobile Metal Gear Solid 3 also ranks quite high. In it's their mother. I was trying I was trying not to say it's their mother 3, which is a game that's only come out in Japan. Right, and I was like, right. oh shit, yeah. that doesn't work either. But, and no, so I went to Metal Gear, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> that doesn't it's work just, either. Because nobody's even, it's not even like one of those games like Mother 3 with like a devoted cult following here. Like nobody's even heard of Machi here. It's uh, made by Chunsoft. And it's sword. Chunsoft? Chunsoft. C H U N S O F T. Oh, so not Sunsoft. No, it's just like a mispronunciation of Sunsoft. <laughs> That the, Josh makes fun of how I say everything, so I get worried always. <laughs> but uh, it's sort of an adventure game. You start off with a selection of characters, and you just choose the character you want to play as. Mm-hmm. You start the story, and the game will end in about two minutes. Oh, like you'll just cool. get an ending, and you'll be like, "What?" <laughs> and then you'll start with somebody else. And it's the same thing, but eventually you start seeing like there are these weird connections between the stories, and you can go back and be like, "Wait, if I do this." And so you have to, like, get about five to ten endings before you can even start getting into the story at all Mm. and having longer playthroughs. Okay, that sounds interesting. Oh, it's... Is there a... a English translation? No. Um, of course I, if you're not. From, any of you are familiar with Oren Ronin, who uh, I believe he's Israeli, but he lives in Japan and uh, works in translation there. And uh, he is currently working on translating the game. He's very well known for being the first person to translate Danganronpa before it came out here. And um, well, probably he can single-handedly take the credit for getting Danganronpa released here. Hmm. Okay, so, he's a so cool guy. I really like and respect him. Hopefully there will be an English translation at some point. Well, he, he's translating. You can you can read a large chunk okay. of the game right now. Oh, okay. So that's neat. It it also reminds me of uh, the horror game Siren, uh, which yeah. didn't do it very well because yeah. I felt like it was too obtuse. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you tr- went between different characters uh, and sometimes, like, you would need to pick up an item as one character in order to progress the story with a different character. Mm-hmm. Aren't there like 25 of those games or something? I have no idea. Yeah. I only had the first one and it was too obtuse yeah, for me. Like a lot even of though, them didn't make it here. But. Even though the, the sight jacking thing was a really interesting idea. Honestly, I really like survival but I also think a lot of survival horror games are really bad and terrible. No, Even that, though that, a lot of the ones legit. people like. Yeah, no, that's, that's legit. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how I felt about so many things my entire life. Like, 
even as a high schooler being super into punk rock, like every time I got recommended a punk rock band, it would be terrible. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit, why is so much punk rock terrible? But why do I like so much of it? When I was a teenager and super into punk rock, I made a mixtape for some guy that I worked with, and it was a bunch of punk songs. And he told me later that he thought it was a test. <laughs> Because he thought, like, all the music was really bad, and then, like, it's a test to see if you're, like, cool or not, and if you just say, oh, I like it all, like, that means you're not cool. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's it's all good music, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's oh, hilarious. I, I knew we were not going to keep dating, and he ga- he had, like, this really rare Babylon 5 action figure, <laughs> and he's like, I want to give this to you, and I'm like, I don't, I don't like Babylon 5. This isn't a thing you should give me. You like this, and I don't. It's, it, you should keep it, and, like, he insisted, and then I think he, like, dropped it off in front of my house or something weird like that, and then I, like, had to take it because I didn't want my parents to be like, why, why is there a why figure of a strange figure? alien man sitting at our front porch? <laughs> and, like, I don't know. I think he knew I was going to break up with him, and he thought I wouldn't break up with him if he gave me a rare Babylon 5 action figure. Well, it's something really special to him anyways. Yeah, it, it was it was very awkward and I felt super uncomfortable mm-hmm. and, and pressured, then, but I uh, broke up with him anyway. And then he posted it on eBay and he made a fortune off of it. I don't even know if eBay existed back then. It was and very you I was quite eBay young. And he made a fortune off of it. <laughs> Aww. Wrapping back around to what you've been playing, Josh, Stardew Valley, I uh I have said before I don't really do farming simulators, but I saw someone's review of it, uh, Space Hamster on YouTube, uh, and it seems like it has such a robust, like, everyday life aspect to it that it seems really interesting. Like, how, how robust is that since you've been playing a lot of it? It has a lot of stuff, and I... I tend to ignore the, yeah, well, the everyday life do. stuff. Um, you do date ladies. I do. I, I have started dating ladies. I don't think I like even worked on anything social in my in the first year of of the game. But uh, Chris Barman, huh? Like I get obsessed with like because it's simple math. If you start and spend all of your money on farming and buy all seeds, and then when you harvest that and get money for your crop and invest that all back into more seeds, like you start making money really fast. Mm-hmm. Because when I play a video game, I want to do math to figure out the best way to make lots well, of I mean, money. No, I do. From farming. <laughs> from farming. <laughs> that's, that's legitimately how I like to play I mean, you don't, games. You don't, you don't have to. There are some people who play them that way. <laughs> no, Too, I mean, I, yeah, right. I mean, you see me. I make like spread it's detailed just, spreadsheets. And I'm like, just, I have to put down this game and finish making some spreadsheets before I progress it's just, anymore. It's just so counter to how I play games. And I'll talk about that later. But continue, Josh. I'm well, sorry. I mean, you don't have to actually sit there and do any math. But like, you know, if, if you're the type of player and I, I put this in one of the guides I wrote for Stardew Valley, but if you're the type of player who, who plays very conservatively and it's like, oh, I'll, I'll spend, you know, a third of my money on seeds and then, like, save the rest, you're going to have less money than the person who is spending all of their money on seeds and then turning that around and then, you know, spending it all on seeds again. And so I, I got so hardcore into... Uh, building this massive farm and and trying to to get as much money as I could in the in the early stages of the game that I would just ignore villagers and I had people like you know introducing themselves to me in like my second year of the game <laughs> but um well, you're new around here <laughs> yeah and so but I no I'm just a hermit yeah, yeah there's and there's like dating mechanics where you there's uh a bunch of different characters who you can date there's you know there's male and female love interests and you can you know pick uh and try to woo them and the things don't always go so great there's a there's a character named Haley that is is getting a lot of talk in forums and even Kotaku did an article about trying to romance Haley and a lot of people just give up because she's kind of terrible (laughs) she's like you know you try to give her a gift and she's like this is the stupidest gift I've ever gotten (laughs) like like what did you try to give her a special Babylon 5 action figure (laughs) (laughs) right but uh I ended up like early in the game somehow 
discovering that she really likes sunflowers, mm-hmm. which I had grown a shit ton of because yeah. I grow a shit ton of everything. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, hey, I'll, you know, I'll try to give her a lot of sunflowers. And I did. And she eventually, you know, warmed up to me. And I think it's great because there's a lot of a lot of stuff where once you get into a relationship with with Haley, who everyone hates, like she's eventually like, oh, you know, I, you're a farmer and that's never really been my thing, but I want to learn more about it. And so she starts like putting herself out there to like, you know, try to learn what your lifestyle is. And she's like, she's like the, the super cheerleader type. And so usually she's like, ah, oh, you know, why do you always smell like farm animals and stuff like that? <laughs> but uh, no, I thought it was, I thought it was a really cool story arc. Like I really mm. did. So you just like basic and, girls. Yeah. I just like basic girls. And Mandy's, Giving me crap because in every time in a dating sim, I always end up trying to date the blonde girl, <laughs> or in a game with dating sim elements. Now, what yeah. will you do in Persona Four Golden? <laughs> there are no blonde girls to date. <laughs> Choose wisely. <laughs> <laughs> Taste the rainbow. <laughs> That math and spread, like, it's so different from how I usually play a game. And a really good example is a uh, project that I, I've recently taken up with Skyrim. Well, I found a mod that's called Familiar Faces. And what it does is it lets you uh, save a character that you play. Uh, and it'll save, like, the equipment uh, and whatnot. And then in your next game, you can bring that character in as an NPC. You can have them as a follower, depending on if you choose choose a voice for them that has the options you can even marry them or whatever and i also have another mod called skyrim unbound uh which is an alternate start mod it lets you start in random places with some you know different equipment uh and you can choose to not be the dragonborn so you don't you know absorb dragon souls you don't learn shouts Mm -hmm. and i went i could make a story out of this so i've decided that i'm gonna make Four or five different non-Dragonborn characters play them for a while, you know, just kind of build a story narrative of what their adventures are before putting them into the system, uh, eventually building up to the Dragonborn, who will, you know, meet each of these people and they'll become an adventuring party. Uh, and like just build a story around that. And I, I started a Tumblr, uh, which you can find. It's Rebecca Elf Princess Skyrim, uh, where I'm just telling, you know, the narrative that I'm building. Uh, but like right now, I'm doing a Nord magic item smith, uh, who lives in Riverwood. Because I am working on the narrative of this character, uh, well, he can't just go and buy crafting items that he wouldn't make any money that way. So I've been spending like hours of the game running around the map looking for ore deposits to mine. And this may be literally the first time in 2,500 hours of Skyrim that I've ever bothered mining anything. Really? Yeah, right. But, but that's what this character would spend his time doing. So he's, I'm going to run around, mine ores and see what kind of adventures happen to him. Hmm. You know, like, one time he was mining some ore out in the reach and some forsworn decided to attack him and so he punched them to death because <laughs> I'm using a perk setup that uh, has options to make unarmed combat more viable and it just amused me to have a guy that punched things to death mm-hmm. so that's what he does hmm. but like I'm playing the game in ways that I haven't played it mm-hmm. Are you like we have such opposite play styles we because, really like, do like I love mining. Like it's one of my favorite yeah, me things. Too. And even in um Lego the Hobbit, <laughs> I was like I just put so much time into mining in that game and like people were complaining about how how shallow the mm-hmm. crafting system was in that game, but I freaking loved it because I love that stuff so much and it's like it's like well the Lego games are like a shallow version of everything. Like that's the point. Like they're yeah. Gameplay yeah. mechanics are, are watered down and more kid friendly and whatever. And so, you know, even when you have crafting elements, it's mm-hmm. like light crafting elements, which, which is fine. You no, know, in Lord of the Rings Online, I spent so much of my time just running around in circles and mining and and then turning that into profit by selling it in the auction hall. Yeah. I mean, like in Skyrim, what I would do is I'd mine all that shit and then you go and smith it. So you get right. levels for that, boost up your smithing park so you can make better items, and then you have items that you can sell. 
I like I've always enjoyed building, you know, a mental narrative with Skyrim. I've talked about that before, but since I've never like done it a shared adventure over multiple characters, I'm like, well, I want some scaled armor. It's not going to be available until I'm level 20 to buy from the shop. So I'll just, you know, smith up. Oh, well, I've got this mod that added an item. And if I smith that item, it'll give me a lot of smithing XP. So I'll just do that until I've got the smithing level that I need to make scaled armor, sell all that shit, and then I have plenty of money. Mm. And, like, you know, that's just not part of the narrative in my head because the scaled armor was the important part, Mm -hmm. and I just ignore everything else. But now that it's a shared world amongst multiple characters and multiple mods, I've also got, like, Legacy of Dragonborn and Relics of Hyrule, which both add a whole bunch of unique items. So, you know, one character finds a unique item and says, I'm going to use this. The next character doesn't get that item. Because, like, even though it's a new game and that character could find the item in the same place because that's where the item is, mm-hmm. no, they can't. You know, Tobjorn Swifthammer has that item. Mm-hmm. Did you say Tobian Swifthammer? Tobjorn Swifthammer is the Tobjorn. first character. Tobjorn? Yeah. Torby, uh, a Nord. He's tw- he's 20. His father has recently died. I was uh, kind of expecting you to, to, like, eventually populate this world that's entirely composed of redheaded females. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm trying to make a diverse party. I've had an unprecedented amount of time recently to get back into gaming, and uh, I've been checking off a few that I've had sitting on the uh, hard drive for a while. I beat, I uh, finally finished Mad Max. I beat the first Uncharted. I'm on my way to beat the uh, second one. The second one is so much better than the first one. Gotten back into Dying Light. Uh, beat uh, Gone Home. Firewatch. And recently, actually, got back into GTA Online. The only time I've played GTA Online was for a site that I wrote for. We did 10 straight hours on launch day. Mm. Uh, but I will always remember running into you <laughs> when your microphone wasn't working. Yeah. But you were just, like, driving, and you were a fantastic driver. It's like, <laughs> holy shit, Julian is a great getaway driver. <laughs> and then for some stupid-ass reason, I was like, I'm going to get out of the car and run and do this thing. Like, why the fuck did I do that? We were getting away. <laughs> <laughs> it's night and day f- compared to when I had last played it. You know, before it was just people on the server, you do missions, the guys are killing each other and, you know, robbing stores. And I mean, there really wasn't much to it. But now there are act- actual, like, um, daily events that you can get involved in. There are random events where one guy is it and you can kill him to get, like, a reward. Huh. Or there's, like, a briefcase that you try to keep in your possession for the longest period of time. The top three players gets a reward. I was driving, I happened to be driving a motorcycle, doing stoppies for no apparent reason, when all of a sudden I was involved in the longest stoppie competition. (laughs) So I just, you know, the one guy, he had, I think, 109 feet. I was doing about 60, 70 feet. And then all of a sudden I'm doing one on this highway and I veer completely out of control, but I go off the road, which is a decline. So... (laughs) I ended up with like 120 feet on that one and uh, <laughs> won the event in the last few seconds. That was pretty cool. That That's really neat. I'm, I'm glad that they've uh, figured out a way to, you know, make it replayable. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, bring people back. The low times seem horrendous, though. But I don't know if that's just an issue I've been having, you know, or, you know, when, when, I, when I was playing it one night, I was having no lag at all, but every other actual player I ran into was, like, lagging and bouncing around on the screen, and mm. I was fine. I don't know if it was me or if it was their connection, but uh, then I was playing a mission with a guy who had to have been 10, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, just a soft-spoken little Swedish boy, um, <laughs> and as we are driving, like, just randomly cars are falling on top of one another. You're hearing, like, random explosions in the background. And, uh, I mean, it was, like, some weird glitch had happened. I don't know what. You go on to the next mission, and he's like, oh, cool, I like this one. And then he's gone. <laughs> I'm still loading. I'm still loading. I appear in the world. I can't bring up any weapons. I have no mini-map. I can do nothing except actually run around. So I'm trying to let cars hit me to kill me uh, so I can, you know, hopefully restart. And then I remember, oh, you can kill yourself. So I do that. And then I restart, and now I'm just looking at a fence. <laughs> that's your that's your personal hell. <laughs> what, a, what a high concept. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like it just devolves and devolves until you're just it's, looking at a fence. It's it's an art house game. You didn't know that, but. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I used to be like that kind of guy who would play when I would see another character. It's almost like deer in headlights. Like, okay, what is he going to do? Oh, he killed me. Okay, fuck. You know, now it's like if anybody even gets close to me, I just wipe them out. 
<laughs> this one kid was like, oh, you bitch, you know, because I have like a female character. And so then I was like, you know what, kid? No, no, no. I went back and I shot him again. I was like, I don't like that word. <laughs> <laughs> did you say that to I him? I did. <laughs> I ran into a player who was level 1,630 or something. Oh, I didn't realize that leveling went that high. My eyes exploded. I'm level 48. I was just like, oh, boy. I, I'm glad to see that your eyes managed to reconstitute mm-hmm. themselves. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a cartoon. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really all I've been doing. Dying Light. I'm having a good time. I had a thought, actually, while I was playing it, just running for my life. Like, the parkour in there is just so much better than the free running in Assassin's Creed. This, the par- Yeah, the parkour in Dying Light is... It just works. It's Yeah, it's very good. Especially once you, you can get a grappling hook. Oh, really? It's like buried deep in, I think, the traversal leveling up. But yeah, you get a grappling hook, you just, and it just sucks you in. and It's like kind of Batman-esque? A bit, except like, so yeah, if you're down below, you shoot it up, you go up, you shoot it across gaps, or you could shoot it on the ground from a high building if it's low enough, and it takes you down there without losing any health, which is cool. Nice. I also got a perk that if you press circle right before you land from a high jump, he'll roll. And kind of save you some energy. Nice. You know, you can jump into the garbage bags to yep. like break your fall. Yep. I always miss. Yeah. <laughs> there's like there's like an eight story building, and I'm like, I-, I can do this, and I jump, and it's like, you know, just like one foot away from the bags, mm-hmm. and I'm dead. It's like, ah. But apparently, you cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried jumping off the main tower building. It's like your base. Yeah. And I'm just ah, oh, and then it just fades to black. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, I think it's um, great sometimes to just be reminded that uh, for all of the amazing facts that, you know, Mandy spits and all of the shit that I say and all of the Skyrim chats that we have from the Rev and everything that just Josh does, well, just Josh and, you know. ultimately Mostly com- playing Battlefront. Ultimately, it does come down to us playing and enjoying games, which I think is the big takeaway from this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, listening to us kind of, you know, jib-jab and... Uh, just talk shop. You know, this is what we do. We play games. We play a lot of games. We've played an unreasonably large number of games. Actually, I haven't played a lot of games so much as just played one game a, a lot. stupidly large amount of time. Yeah. So, yay, look. Hey, we're at the end of another episode. Hopefully you feel like you've just been chilling with us, you know? Like, uh, you're the one sitting on this sofa. Uh, so with that, uh, I think uh, we're going to put a bow on this one, you know? Cake is a lie. Half glass gaming out. And apparently the Statue of Liberty wears a size 879 sandal. Wow. (laughs) Apparently ducks have three eyelids.